morning, everybody. My name is Rajaji Meshram. I'm a director at KPMG. And uh, let me start by saying that I'm feeling very honored and privileged to be a part of this uh, August gathering today. And uh, it's my honor to share the dais with such eminent people. Um, I started my career in the railways. Uh, in, in, uh, I belong to the mechanical department of the, of the Indian Railways. And uh, I served for six years there. And post that, I did my MBA and quit. And these are exciting times for the railways. A lot of things, uh, there's a lot of expectation. There is a lot of um, things in the air. A lot of marquee projects are being talked about. Um, for this seminar, which is based on smart technology, what I thought I would present is to give an overview of where we are. Um, as Mr. Radhakrishnan rightly said, he, he stressed about, he talked about speed, he's talked about public-private partnerships and getting investments in by the FDI. Um, so therefore, where, what is the context to all this? What are the numbers behind this? So what I did today morning was I just pulled out certain numbers and I thought I would present it in front of this gathering here and we could have further discussion in the context of those numbers and, and, and where we are today. So let me start with some of the numbers and then we can have a, you know, what those numbers mean and, and therefore what, what does it imply for us. What did this slide show you? This slide shows you the gross revenues of the railways. Right now it's somewhere around 140,000 um, crores. What you see in the graph is what is the share of passenger earnings, goods earnings, and other earnings. In the past five years, it has grown by a rate of 12.6% at a CAGR rate of 12.6%. As compared to 2007-2008, this revenues has grown two times. And why I'm talking about 2007-2008, I'll come in one of the s slides uh, further down. What the slide on the right, the graph on the right shows is that the composition of this earnings has remained more or less the same. This, the, the bread earner, the main bread earner for the railways has been goods traffic. So it's 64% and it's, it's, it's this, the ratio is, is, is the same for all these five years. That's a point to ponder on. Are there, these are the only revenue source sources or are there others also that can be tapped into? What does this slide show you? The slide shows you in what, the rate at which the freight volumes have grown. We are a part of the billion uh, tons club. Very proud to be there. The earnings, as you saw, has increased at 12.6%. The freight volumes have been increasing at 4.3%. But when you look at another parameter, which is what is the average lead for freight, that's going down. KPMG recently did a, a very large project for the Ministry of Coal, which looked at coal linkage rationalization because the various power plants and the coal mines in our country are not linked in the most optimal manner. It's, it's, it's not done in a way in which you reduce the logistics cost and KPMG did a study and you know logically a mine which is closer to a power plant needs to be linked to that. So in case such things happen then the average lead is going to go further down. So this is an implication for the railways. This is going to have an implication on the top line and what railways earns. So that's an important point to note. What does this slide show you? The two slides have two parameters, and they exchange on what, which one is on the top and which one is at the bottom. The one on the left shows you what's the growth in peak, the passenger kilometers. OK, that's growing at around 6%. The graph at the bottom shows what's the growth in the net ton kilometers. That's growing at around 2%. The graph on the right shows you what's the earnings of the railways from per PKM or per NTKM. The passenger rate is at around 31.5 paise per PKM. And the freight is 137 paise, 1.37 rupees per NTKM. So the point that is that would look, that you would sort of uh, derive from this is that the PKM is increasing, which is not earning enough revenues for the railways. The NTKM, which is actually the bread earner, is is stable. It's not growing at a very fast pace right now. And the last slide here 
What it shows is that while the revenues increased at around 12.6%, the working expenses increased at around 12% in the past five years. There's another parameter which says cost per wagon kilometer is around, it was around seven rupees in 2007, 2008. Today it is 29, so there's an increase of four times. The revenues, as I pointed out in the first slide, had increased by two times, and the cost per wagon kilometer has increased by four times. Uh, why I am pointing out at 2007, 2008 is because in the recent past, or in, in the past decade or so, that's the one year in which the operating ratio has been very, very good. Um, and therefore there's a reference uh, year that you can look at. And what's the reason for this? If you look at the two pie charts on the right, what it shows is that the wage bill in 2013-14 is around 58% of the total working expenses. While in 2007-08 it was 47%. All these numbers I've taken from the Indian Railways website, but it all gives you a perspective. It, 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 it presents, uh, it gives you where we are and therefore what is it that we can do. So here are some thoughts. So what is the message in these, in these numbers? I'll just read them out to you. These are my thoughts. Is that the structure of the costs, because you, know, you, you look at the, the wage bill, which is such a large share, the structure of those costs might not allow you to do an immediate reduction in the cost base, and therefore the solution lies in earning more. That's the way forward. How do you earn more? You need more traffic, and you need more goods traffic, not passenger traffic, because as we, say, as we saw, the passenger traffic is not giving you those revenues. The goods traffic is. So how do you grow the goods traffic? You need more of the traditional cargo commodities, which is coal and iron ore and, and uh, cement and fertilizer, and a lot of action is being taken there are announcements in the paper which says that there are certain projects which will release, let's say, 100 million tons of coal into the railway network. They are being focused upon, and that's the right thing to do because the traditional cargo is a staple product. They can use only the railways, and therefore focusing on them will increase the top line. And what about new cargo commodities? That's where all these new policies come in that Dr. Uh, Mr. Radhakrishnan talked about. The PPP policy has not worked, but it will work. I mean, it just needs to be put in place. It needs a tweak here and there. There is the auto freight train operators policy. There is the special freight train operators policy. All these policies need to be tweaked so that new cargo commodities, which today are using the road mode, will come to the railway mode. So that will again increase the top line. Now to foster this growth, the investment is required in the right technology and in the right projects. As I, rightly, as I just mentioned, there are projects which are being focused upon which will release a huge amount of traffic into the, uh, into the, into the railway system, and these need to be prioritized, these need to be focused on, and it needs to be ensured that these are done as fast as, as is possible. So where will this investment come from? And that brings me to my last slide. It just, this just puts the entire, you know, the railway in a, in, a, in a kind of a framework. So I have said that railways is infrastructure and operations. Um, in infrastructure, there is tracks, stations, and rolling stock. There are various things that are, that are being talked about right now. So in tracks, there are BOT and annuity projects which have been, which have been identified. But those need, you know, that, that, will, that will be a new thing that will happen in the railways, a BOT or an annuity project that has happened in the road sector. It's not happened yet in the railway sector. Things need to be put in place. But yes, that's a way forward. Station redevelopment, again, that's another avenue where if, again, the proper uh, tweaks are done. There are challenges there related to land acquisition, etc. Those are put in place again. That infrastructure, that investment can come in, in that piece of infrastructure. In rolling stock, we will require with DFC and with high-speed rail, or with projects like speeding up the uh, to 160 kmph on on uh, nine routes. We will re require rolling stock which is faster, which can carry more load, and which can also be leased because today uh, uh, the largest buyer of wagons is the railways itself, but if it's not so in other countries. So if that is opened up more earnestly, I mean, it will unleash a lot of investment in, in the rolling stock. Uh, in, in train operations, there, is, there are multiple operators in the world. Uh, in the UK, as everyone knows, there are train franchises that is, the government doesn't operate trains. So those are things that will slowly evolve, will need to evolve in the Indian, Indian context. So as you get new operators, you will get newer technology, you will have newer systems of working. Um, and that's, that's an area that we need to, to move towards. We still, not, you know, that's, there's some path that we have to traverse, but that's somewhere that we will need to reach at. So to um, close my uh, presentation, what I've said is that we need smart allocation of resources and smart technology, and I think that's the way forward for the railway sector in India. Thank you.